Have you ever wondered if we are really living in the last days? The truth is that many Christians are completely unprepared for what is to come. Amazingly, the signs of the end times are right before our eyes, but few have the eyes to see. This video will challenge everything you thought you knew about the apocalypse and the return of Christ. Prepare for a shocking revelation. What most churches teach about the last days is dangerously wrong. But don't worry, you're about to discover biblical truth that will change your life forever. In just a few minutes, you'll have access to crucial information that the religious elite doesn't want you to know. This isn't just another theory about the end times. It's an urgent call to action that could determine your eternal destiny. Don't miss a second of this vital video. Click the subscribe button right now and activate the notification bell. Your faith and your eternity may depend on it. And don't walk away at the end. We have a powerful prayer that will transform your spiritual perspective. Let's start this eye-opening journey together. The End Times, a theme that echoes through the centuries, continues to intrigue and fascinate hearts and minds in the Christian world. It is as if we were facing a great cosmic puzzle, where each piece represents a sign, a prophecy, a glimpse of God's greater plan. The scriptures present us with this celestial map, inviting us on a journey of spiritual discovery and preparation. As the book of Daniel reminds us, Many will search him, and knowledge will multiply. Daniel 12-4 This search for understanding is not mere curiosity, but a call to vigilance and holiness. Imagine yourself as an explorer, scouring the pages of the Bible for clues about Christ's return. Each verse is like a compass, pointing north to eternity. The Apostle Peter encourages us in this spiritual expedition, saying, since all these things are to be done away with, you ought to be such as those who live in holy conduct and godliness, 2 Peter 3.11. It is an invitation to deep reflection. How are we living in the light of this expectation? Do our priorities reflect the urgency of the times in which we live? The global changes we witness today seem to echo Jesus' words in Matthew 24. Wars, rumors of wars, nations rising against nations, are these not the signs he mentioned? However, the Master also warned us, and do not be dismayed, for it must come to pass, but it is not yet the end. Matthew 24, 6. This tension between vigilance and patience is at the heart of Christian expectation. We are not called to alarmism, but to an active hope, a faith that is manifested in works of love and justice. Revelation, far from being just a book of terrible judgments, is actually a message of hope. John, the beloved disciple, presents us with visions of a new heaven and a new earth, where God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Revelation 21, 4. This promise of final restoration is the golden thread that runs through the entire end-time narrative. It is a powerful reminder that as bleak as the world may seem, the light of Christ shines most brightly in the darkness. The relevance of the eschatological study for the present is undeniable. It's not just about predicting the future, but about living the now with purpose and clarity. Paul exhorts the Thessalonians, You are not in darkness, brethren, that this day should overtake you as a thief. 1 Thessalonians 5.4 This light that Paul mentions is spiritual discernment, the ability to interpret the times in the light of God's word. How have you been seeking this discernment in your daily life? The challenge that the end times presents to every Christian is multifaceted. On the one hand, we are called to spiritual vigilance, like the wise virgins in Jesus' parable, Matthew 25, 13 On the other hand, we are challenged to be actively engaged in the world, being salt of the earth and light of the world, Matthew 5, 13 14 This balance between future expectation and present responsibility is crucial. How have you balanced these aspects in your walk of faith? 
the biblical promises and warnings related to the end times are not mere doctrinal points for theological debate. They are calls to action, invitations to personal and collective transformation. The prophet Micah reminds us, He hath declared unto thee, O man, that which is good. And what is it that the Lord requires of you, but to do justice and to love loving kindness, and to walk humbly with your God? Micah 6, 8. How can we live these virtues in light of the expectation of Christ's return? As we dive deeper into this topic, we realize that the study of the end times is actually a study about God's character and His redemptive plan for mankind. It's a journey that takes us from Genesis to Revelation, revealing God's faithfulness through the ages. As Isaiah prophesied, Remember the former things of old, that I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me, that I declare the end from the beginning. Isaiah 46, 9-10 on this journey of discovery, we are invited not only to know the future events, but to get to know the author of the story more deeply. And it is in this knowledge that we find not only answers, but transformation. The signs of the end times are like a prophetic mosaic, each piece revealing an aspect of the divine plan. In Matthew 24, 6, 7, Jesus presents us with an intriguing panorama. Wars, rumors of wars, famines, and earthquakes. These are not mere random events, but indicators of a deeper spiritual reality. Imagine yourself as a cosmic detective, observing not only the events, but their interconnections and hidden meanings. As the prophet Isaiah reminds us, Behold, I am doing a new thing which is coming forth, do you not perceive it? Isaiah 43:19. This keen insight is crucial to navigating the turbulent times ahead. The rise of wickedness in the world is not just a pessimistic observation, but a significant prophetic sign. Jesus prophesied, Because iniquity abounds, the love of many will wax cold. Matthew 24, 12 This cooling of love is perhaps the most subtle and worrying sign. It is not just about cataclysmic events, but about a change in the heart of humanity. How have you perceived this change in your environment? Has love of neighbor been replaced by indifference or even hostility? This is a call to introspection and compassionate action. The rise of false teachers is another crucial, often overlooked sign. Peter warns us, as false prophets arose among the people, so there will also be false teachers among you. 2 Peter 2, 1. These are not just obvious charlatans, but are often subtle voices that distort the truth. Spiritual discernment becomes, therefore, a vital skill. How have you sharpened your discernment? Remember, the best defense against deception is a deep and intimate knowledge of God's truth. Misinterpretation of signs can lead to dangerous extremes, spiritual apathy or excessive alarmism. Paul counsels us, do not be easily moved from your minds, nor be troubled, 2 Thessalonians 2.2. Balance is crucial. We must be vigilant but not paralyzed by fear, hopeful but not naive. How have you maintained this balance in your spiritual life? Perhaps it is time to re-evaluate your posture in the face of the signs of the times. Misinformation and sensationalism are modern traps that obscure biblical truth. In an age of instantaneous information, discernment becomes even more crucial. Proverbs reminds us, The simple believe every word, but the prudent watch his steps. Proverbs 14.15 How do you filter the information you receive? Seeking divine wisdom amidst the noise of modern media is a constant challenge, but essential to maintaining a solid biblical perspective on current events. The signs of the times are not just warnings, but invitations to action. Jesus used the parable of the fig tree to illustrate the importance of watchful observation. Learn, therefore, from this parable of the fig tree, when its branches become tender and sprout leaves, you know that summer is near. Mark 13, 28. 
This observation should not lead us to passivity, but to a life of purpose and preparation. How have you responded to the signs you see around you? Each sign is an opportunity to deepen your faith and positively impact the world around you. Understanding the signs of the times should lead us to a life of holiness and service, Peter emphasizes. Now since all these things are to be done away with, what kind of people ought ye not to be in holy conduct and godliness? 2 Peter 3.11 This is not a call to isolation, but to a deeper engagement with the world, being light in the darkness. How can you be an agent of hope and transformation in the midst of today's challenges? Remember, every act of love and justice is a powerful testimony of the coming kingdom. As we observe the signs of the times, it is crucial to keep our focus on the person of Jesus Christ. He is the center of all prophecy and the fulfillment of all of God's promises. As John reminds us in Revelation, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy, Revelation 19.10. Therefore, while we study the signs, we must not lose sight of the author and finisher of our faith. How have you kept your eyes fixed on Christ in the midst of the turmoil of the world? This Christ-centered perspective is the key to navigating uncertain times with faith, hope, and love. Preparing for the end times is like building a house on a rock, as Jesus taught in Matthew 7, 24, 27. This solid foundation is the Word of God, an unshakable foundation in turbulent times. Imagine yourself as a spiritual architect, designing your life based on biblical principles. Each verse is like a brick, each teaching a supporting beam. The psalmist declares, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my paths. Psalm 119-105 This divine illumination is not only for knowledge, but for transformation. How have you allowed God's word to shape your daily decisions? Holiness is not an abstract concept, but a practical call to the likeness of Christ. Peter exhorts us, As he who called you is holy, so be ye also holy in all your conduct. 1 Peter 1.15 This holiness manifests itself in every aspect of our lives, in the words we speak, in the choices we make, in the attitudes we cultivate. It is a continuous process of refinement, like gold purified by fire. Reflect. In what areas of your life do you feel the call to greater consecration? Remember, holiness is not perfection, but direction, a constant journey toward God. The life of prayer is the oxygen of the soul in preparation. Paul instructs us to pray without ceasing. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 this does not mean being constantly on one's knees, but maintaining a continuous dialogue with God. Imagine your prayer life as an uninterrupted conversation with a close friend. Share your joys, your worries, your dreams. Prayer is not only talking, but also listening. As Elijah discovered, God often speaks in the whisper of a gentle breeze. 1 Kings 19.12 have you created spaces of silence in your life to hear God's voice? Spiritual vigilance is crucial in these end times. Jesus warned, Watch ye therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour. Matthew 25, 13 This vigilance is not passive waiting, but a state of active readiness. It is like an attentive sentinel watching the horizons of history for the signs of the times. It involves spiritual discernment, the ability to interpret events in the light of God's word. How have you cultivated this mindfulness in your daily life? Perhaps it is through regular study of the scriptures, intercessory prayer, or conscious engagement with world events. Participation in a committed faith community is vital for spiritual preparation. The author of Hebrews warns us, let us not forsake the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some. Hebrews 10.25 This communion is not only a social gathering, but a mutual strengthening in faith. It is in this context that we are challenged, encouraged, and equipped. Think of your local church as a spiritual training center where each member has a vital role. 
How have you contributed to the growth and preparation of your faith community? Remember, in the body of Christ, every part is essential. Discernment through the Holy Spirit is a crucial skill in these last days. Paul prays for the Philippians that your love may increase more and more in knowledge and all insight. Philippians 1.9 This discernment goes beyond human wisdom. It is an attunement with the heart of God. It is the ability to distinguish truth from error, the essential from the superfluous. How have you sought this discernment? Perhaps it is through meditation on the word, prayer for wisdom, or seeking advice from mature spiritual mentors. Remember, the Holy Ghost is our guide on this journey of preparation. Understanding the prophetic signs should lead us to a strengthened faith, not fear. Jesus said, when these things begin to come to pass, rejoice and lift up your heads, for your redemption is at hand. Luke 21, 28. This perspective of hope transforms our view of world events. Each sign becomes not a cause for panic, but a reminder of God's faithfulness and the nearness of His promise. How have you responded to the signs of the times? Have they fed their faith or their fear? Being ready for Christ's return is the culmination of our preparation. Jesus teaches us through the parable of the ten virgins, Matthew 25, 1, 13, the importance of always being prepared. This readiness is not just a passive expectation, but an active and purposeful living. It involves using our talents for the kingdom. Matthew 25, 14, 30. Caring for those in need, Matthew 25, 31 to 46. And proclaiming the gospel to the ends of the earth, Matthew 28, 19, 20. Reflect, if Christ were to return today, how would he find him? Busy with his business or distracted by the worries of this world? May each day be lived with anticipation of his imminent return, ever ready to hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. Matthew 25 to 21. Meeting the challenges of the end times requires a courage born of unwavering faith in Christ. This courage is not mere human bravado, but a deep trust in God's power and faithfulness. As Paul declares in Romans 8, 38, 39, nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. This truth is our strength in turbulent times. Imagine yourself as a spiritual warrior wearing the armor of God described in Ephesians 6, 10 to 18. Every piece of this armor, truth, righteousness, the gospel of peace, faith, salvation, and God's word equips us to endure in evil days. How have you strengthened your faith to face the challenges ahead? Persecution, a reality for many Christians throughout history, may intensify in the last days. Jesus warned us, if they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. John 15, 20. However, this persecution should not discourage us, but strengthen our resolve. Remember Peter's words, but if you suffer for righteousness sake, blessed are you. 1 Peter 3, 14. This beatitude does not glorify suffering, but recognizes the privilege of sharing in the sufferings of Christ. How have you prepared yourself spiritually to face opposition for your faith? Doubts can assail even the most steadfast believer in times of tribulation. The psalmist expresses this struggle in Psalm 42, 3. My tears have been my food day and night, while they say to me continually, where is your God? However, doubt is not the opposite of faith, but often the path to deeper faith. It is in the crucible of doubt that our faith is refined and strengthened. Remember the story of Thomas, whose doubt led to a powerful confession of faith, John 20, 24, 29. How have you been dealing with your own doubts? See them not as failures, but as opportunities for spiritual growth. Tribulation is a recurring theme in scripture, especially in relation to the last days. Jesus warns us, in the world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. John 16, 33. This victory of Christ is the basis of our confidence. Tribulations are not punishments, but opportunities to demonstrate the sufficiency of God's grace. 
Paul discovered this in his own life, declaring, When I am weak, then I am strong. 2 Corinthians 12, 10. How have you experienced God's strength in your weaknesses? Every tribulation is an opportunity to witness God's transforming power. The testimonies of perseverance throughout Christian history are beacons of hope for us today. Hebrews 11, often called the Hall of Faith, presents us with a cloud of witnesses who stood firm in the face of tremendous adversity. From Abel to the anonymous martyrs, their stories inspire and challenge us. Stephen, facing death, saw the heavens opened, Acts 7, 55-56. Polycarp, before the stake, declared his unwavering loyalty to Christ. These stories are not just historical records, but living examples of faith in action. Who are your faith heroes? How have your stories shaped your own spiritual journey? God's word is our infallible compass in times of uncertainty. As the psalmist declares, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Psalm 119, 105. This divine light not only illuminates our path, but also comforts our hearts. God's promises are anchors for our souls in the midst of life's storms. Isaiah reminds us, Thou shalt keep in peace him whose mind is set upon thee. Isaiah 26-3 How have you clung to God's promises in difficult times? Maybe it's memorizing key verses or meditating daily on scripture. Remember, God's word is not just information, but transformation. Divine comfort in times of tribulation is a powerful reality for the believer. Paul describes him as the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction. So 2 Corinthians 1, 3, 4. This comfort is not mere platitude, but a tangible presence that sustains and strengthens. It is the embrace of the Heavenly Father in our darkest moments. Remember how God comforted Elijah in his time of despair. 1 Kings 19, 1-18 How have you experienced God's comfort in your life? This comfort is not only for our benefit, but so that we can comfort others with the comfort we receive from God. The assurance that God is in control, even in tribulation, is the foundation of our peace. Daniel, interpreting Nebuchadnezzar's vision, declares, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed. Daniel 2.44 This eternal perspective allows us to see beyond immediate circumstances. Even when chaos seems to reign, we remember that God is orchestrating all things for the fulfillment of his purposes. As Job discovered after his ordeal, I know that you can do all things and that none of your plans can be thwarted. Job 42.2 how has this truth impacted your perspective on the challenges you face? How about adopting a daily practice of gratitude, acknowledging God's sovereignty in all situations? The end times, far from being just a period of tribulation, are the prelude to the grand final restoration promised by God. This restoration is not a mere correction, but a complete transformation of creation. As Isaiah prophesied, for behold, I am creating new heavens and a new earth, and there shall be no remembrance of the things past. Isaiah 65, 17. Imagine a world where every aspect of creation perfectly reflects the glory of God. This vision is not a distant utopia, but a future reality guaranteed by God's faithfulness. How does this promise of cosmic renewal affect your perspective on current challenges? Perhaps it is time to lift our eyes beyond immediate circumstances and envision the glorious future God is preparing. The establishment of the kingdom of God is the culmination of redemptive history. Jesus often spoke of this kingdom, teaching his disciples to pray, Thy kingdom come, Matthew 6.10. This kingdom is not an earthly political entity, but the full manifestation of God's rulership. Daniel saw this reality in a vision, and there was given to him dominion and glory and a kingdom, that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. Daniel 7.14 The kingdom of God is characterized by righteousness, peace, 
and joy in the Holy Spirit. Romans 14, 17. How are you living out the values of this kingdom in your daily life? Every act of love, justice, and mercy is an anticipation of this coming kingdom. Revelation, often misinterpreted as a book of condemnation, is actually a powerful message of hope. John the Apostle writes to encourage persecuted believers by revealing the ultimate triumph of Christ. The vision of God's throne, Revelation 4, reminds us that despite the apparent chaos on earth, God reigns sovereign. The promise to the overcomers, Revelation 2-3, assures us that our faithfulness is not in vain. How have you seen the apocalypse? Is it a book that inspires fear or hope in your heart? Perhaps it is time to rediscover this message of victory and encouragement. Faithfulness in times of trial is a central theme in the end times. Jesus commends the Philadelphia church, Thou hast kept the word of my perseverance, Revelation 3.10. This perseverance is not mere passive resistance, but an active adherence to the truth of the gospel. James encourages us, Blessed is the man who endures trial, for when he is approved, he will receive the crown of life, James 1.12. How have you shown faithfulness in your own trials? Every challenge is an opportunity to strengthen your faith and testify to God's sustaining power. God's triumph over evil is a recurring theme in Scripture, culminating in Revelation. Paul declares, He must reign until he has put all enemies under his feet. 1 Corinthians 15, 25 this triumph is not just a future event, but a reality that we can experience today. As John states, this is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. 1 John 5, 4. Every time we resist sin, choose love over hate, or forgive an enemy, we are participating in this cosmic victory. How have you experienced God's triumph in your everyday life? The vision of a new heaven and a new earth is the climax of biblical revelation. John describes, I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth have passed away. Revelation 21 part 1. This is not an escape from reality, but the final transformation of creation. Peter reminds us that we are to live in anticipation of this future, but we, According to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. 2 Peter 3.13 How does this hope shape your priorities and decisions today? Perhaps it is time to reevaluate what really matters in the light of eternity. The absence of pain and death in the new creation is a deeply consoling promise. John saw a future where God will wipe away every tear from their eyes and there shall be no more death, nor mourning, nor crying, nor pain. Revelation 21, 4. This is not a denial of present suffering, but a powerful affirmation that suffering will not have the last word. Paul reminds us that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Romans 8, 18. How has this eternal perspective comforted you in times of pain or loss? Sharing this hope can be a powerful ministry to those who suffer. The call to share the gospel takes on special urgency in light of the end times. Jesus declared, And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world for a witness to all nations. Then shall the end come. Matthew 24, 14. This is not a task only for professional evangelists, but for every believer. Peter exhorts us, Always be ready to give an answer to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you. 1 Peter 3.15 How have you shared your hope with others? Every conversation, every act of kindness, every prayer for others is an opportunity to sow the seeds of the coming kingdom. Living vigilantly awaiting Christ's return is a call to a life of purpose and intentionality. Jesus warns us, Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Matthew 25, 13 This vigilance is not passive waiting, but a state of active readiness. 
Imagine yourself as an Olympian, constantly training and preparing for the big day. Every moment becomes an opportunity for spiritual growth. How have you cultivated this mindfulness in your daily life? Perhaps it will be through constant prayer, regular Bible study, or daily soul searching. Remember, vigilance is not motivated by fear, but by love and expectation of meeting our Lord. Participating in discussions about the end times is crucial for deepening our understanding and strengthening our faith. Paul commends the Bereans for searching the scriptures daily to see if what they heard was true, Acts 17.11. This investigative and discursive spirit is vital for a mature faith. Engage in Bible study groups, attend seminars, or start meaningful conversations with other believers. Remember the words of Proverbs, iron sharpens with iron, so a man to his friend. Proverbs 27.17 How have you sought opportunities to sharpen your understanding through dialogue with others? In-depth study of the scriptures is critical to discerning the signs of the times. Jesus rebuked the Pharisees for not knowing how to interpret the signs of their day, Matthew 16.3. To avoid this mistake, we must delve into biblical prophecies, not as an academic exercise, but as a search for God's will. Daniel, a model student of prophecy, understood from the books, the time of the fulfillment of God's promises, Daniel 9-2. How have you deepened your study of the scriptures, especially the prophetic passages? Consider creating a plan for systematic Bible reading, focusing on passages related to the last days. Encouraging others to prepare for Christ's return is a vital responsibility of believers. Paul exhorts, exhort one another daily. Hebrews 3.13 This mutual encouragement strengthens the community of faith and keeps us focused on our heavenly hope. Share your insights, offer support in times of doubt, and celebrate together the signs of God's faithfulness. How have you been an encourager in your faith community? Remember, every word of encouragement, every gesture of support is a stone in the building of the kingdom of God. Self-reflection is crucial in this journey of preparation. Asking yourself, Am I living according to the values of the kingdom of God is an exercise in spiritual alignment. Jesus taught that the kingdom of God is characterized by righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Romans 14, 17. Examine your life in the light of these values. Do your actions reflect God's justice? Are you a peacemaker in your environment? Does your life radiate the joy of the Holy Spirit? Paul challenges us, examine yourselves, whether ye are really in the faith. 2 Corinthians 13.5 This self-examination is not for condemnation, but for continuous growth and transformation. Sharing reflections on the signs of the times is a powerful form of witnessing. Peter encourages us, always be ready to give an answer to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you. 1 Peter 3.15 By sharing your insights into current events in light of Scripture, you not only strengthen your own faith, but also plant seeds of hope in others. How have you used the current circumstances as starting points for spiritual conversations? Every world crisis, every technological advance, every social change can be an opportunity to point to God's sovereignty and redemptive plan. The journey of preparing for Christ's return is a unique opportunity for spiritual growth. Paul compares our spiritual life to a race. I have run in such a way that you may overtake it. 1 Corinthians 9.24 This preparation involves discipline, perseverance, and focus. Take each challenge as an opportunity to strengthen your faith. Cultivate the spiritual disciplines, prayer, fasting, Bible study, worship, not as empty rituals, but as means of intimacy with God. How have you taken advantage of this journey to deepen your spirituality? Remember, the goal is not just to get to the end, but to be transformed in the process. Positively impacting those around us is a tangible manifestation of our preparation for Christ's return. 
Jesus calls us to be salt and light in the world, Matthew 5, 13 to 14. Every act of kindness, every word of encouragement, every gesture of love is a demonstration of the kingdom of God. Engage in your community, serve those in need, be an agent of reconciliation. How are your actions reflecting the reality of the kingdom to come? Remember the words of James, faith, if it does not have works, is dead in itself. James 2, 17. May your life be a living testimony of the hope that is in you, drawing others to the beauty of the gospel and the expectation of our Lord's glorious return. As we come to the end of this journey through the mysteries of the last days, let us remember that knowledge about the end times is not just to satisfy our curiosity, but to prepare and inspire us to live holy lives dedicated to God. May the truths we explore today not only inform our minds, but transform our hearts, leading us to a deeper faith and a stronger commitment to the kingdom of God. Now, let us unite in prayer, seeking God's guidance and protection in these challenging times. Heavenly Father, we approach your throne of grace with humble and expectant hearts. We recognize that we live in turbulent times where the signs of the end times manifest all around us. Lord, we ask you to give us discernment to interpret these signs in the light of your word. May the Holy Spirit guide us into all truth, protecting us from deception and false doctrine. Strengthen our faith, O God, so that we may stand firm amid the coming storms. May the assurance of your love and your sovereignty be our unshakable anchor. Father, we thank you for the hope we have in Christ Jesus. In a world filled with fear and uncertainty, may we be beacons of hope, proclaiming the truth of your coming kingdom. We ask you to use us as instruments of your peace and reconciliation. May our lives reflect the reality of your kingdom, demonstrating love, compassion, and justice in all our actions. Lord, awaken in us a renewed passion for your word and your presence. May we be found vigilant and prepared for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, come and enable us to be faithful witnesses in these last days. May the power of Christ's resurrection be evident in our lives, bringing healing, deliverance, and transformation wherever we go. Give us courage to face persecution and adversity, knowing that you are with us. May the expectation of Christ's return motivate us to live holy and dedicated lives. Lord, we ask you to use this channel as an instrument to spread your truth and prepare your people for the times to come. Father, we pray for those who do not yet know you. May the urgency of the times awaken in them a search for you. Use us, Lord, to reach the lost with the message of the gospel. May every view, every share, every comment be a seed planted for your kingdom. Lord, we pray that your grace and mercy will be poured out upon this generation. Prepare us, O God, for the glorious day of Christ's return. May we be found faithful with our lamps burning, ready for the marriage feast of the Lamb. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, if this message has touched your heart and awakened in you a desire to delve deeper into the mysteries of the last days, do not let this moment pass. Click now on the subscribe button and activate the notification bell. By doing so, you are joining a community of believers who are committed to preparing for Christ's return. Every video, every teaching, every prayer shared here is an opportunity to grow in knowledge and in faith. Don't miss out on any content that could be crucial to your spiritual journey in these challenging times. Join us in this mission to spread the truth and hope of the gospel. Sign up now and be part of this family that is preparing for the glorious return of our Lord Jesus Christ. May God richly bless you as we walk together on this journey of faith and preparation. As we close another chapter together, I know some questions might still echo in your mind. You may be wondering how to navigate the complexities of spiritual life and unlock a path of abundance and blessings. The journey is challenging, but you don't have to walk it alone. 
In the comments, you'll find a powerful key to this door many seek to open. The ebook, Discover Prosperity with God, the ultimate guide to overcoming spiritual challenges and living a life of abundance. This is not just any book. It is the fruit of years of research, experience, and profound revelations now within your reach. Imagine overcoming the barriers that prevent your spiritual and financial growth. Think of the comfort and security of living a life aligned with the promises of prosperity meant for you. This ebook is more than words on a page. It's a map to the treasure you deserve. Join the many who are already on a path illuminated by faith and knowledge. The power to transform your life is just a click away. Check it out now in the comments and start your journey to a life of fulfillment and prosperity. Remember, prosperity with God is not just a distant dream. It's a promise waiting to be fulfilled. With this guide, you're one step closer to making it a reality. Your success story begins today.